Water has no substitute. Use it wisely. Water Week has got us thinking all about the need for a sustainable use for the scarce resource. And today we're privileged enough to have Henk Ovink in studio with us, who advises the Obama administration on water management and the Consul General of the Netherlands, Bonnie Horbach, who has brought him to South Africa to try and find local solutions that we face, of course, for the challenges that we face in South Africa. So it's very good to have both of you here. And of course, we're talking about a very, very important topic, the need for water. I'm going to refer my first question to you first, Bonnie. Um, why is it that you thought it's so important to bridge the gap between the Netherlands and South Africa and what do you think that we can learn from this entire experience? Well, last year I started with a, a platform called Co-Create SA, which is all about bringing Dutch and South African innovations and experts together mm -hmm. to co-create uh, solutions for our future. Um, and I think we can learn from each other. Yes. You know, it's not like we have the solution for a problem, but uh, putting the right people in the in the room, something happens and we can co-create uh, sustainable solutions together. And that's what I try to do with getting Hank here to yes. talk about water. And a man of great expertise indeed. I mean, we're talking about the fact that you advised the Obama administration. You've been part of the, the uh, Hurricane Sandy task force in the USA. So a lot of very big and important projects. What have you found being the challenges facing us in South Africa, maybe in terms of cities, and how we can make water work for communities? So, uh, South Africa is no different than a lot of other places in the world. Mm -hmm. Two to four billion people of the world's population will be at risk, and you see the same here. Mm -hmm. It's both sea level rise and, an intense, and more intense uh, storms mm -hmm. that you know, hit your coast and actually eat away uh, a land. And I think you know, a little more south of this strand, where mm -hmm. you can actually see it, yep. but there are other places. More, more and longer periods of drought, so no water at all or water of the wrong quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, and periods where intense rainfall actually uh, uh, um, is hitting your cities very hard and yeah. your cities, both the, the, the pavement as well as the sewage system, can't deal with it. So there's a multitude of issues yeah. that have to deal with flooding, scarcity and quality of water that you have to address. Wow. I heard an ad once on radio saying that the, the Third World War, perhaps, in the future might be fought over the scarcity of water as a resource. How far are we from something as extreme as that happening? I'm trying to just gain a, a gauge of how extreme the problem is right now and how far we are from it really kind of toppling over. So the problem is very extreme. Uh, world Economic Forum did not for nothing put it at its, world, at its number one risk worldwide. Yeah. Uh, but there's another problem and that there's no awareness. Nobody read that in the paper. It was not, I'm, so I'm happy we're actually talking about it yes. here now. But nobody really thinks water is the, the, the next move to a, a big conflict. Yes. I'm not going to say this is the, the next world war, but the tension is there and there is a conflict. Now, I'm a bit of a straightforward kind of guy. Yeah. I think we have oceans and oceans of water okay. out there. And with global warming, polar ice caps are melting, so ocean levels are rising. On the land front, we are having a lack of water. So why not just take the water out of the ocean, desalinate it, distribute it? Is it not that simple? No, it's not that simple. On the land side, we don't always have uh, too little water. Mm -hmm. With a lot of rainfall, we actually have too much water. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of water uh, in the air and in the soil. So there will be a multitude of uh, solutions needed to, mm -hmm. to face the problems of tomorrow. But uh, this is definitely one part of it. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad that we have you here uh, helping us learn so much more, uh, as is, of course, a great need right now. And from you, uh, very quickly, Bonnie, what else can we expect from Co-Create A in terms of uh, you know, bridging the gap and what more can we learn? What are you, future projects that maybe you might be investing? Well, one of future projects is that I will have Hank back in like four months to have uh, such a process again. So if people want to learn from him, please contact me. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a co-create uh, SA fund, and we fund small projects which are based on South African Dutch cooperation, long-term uh, partnerships, uh, solving uh, challenges that, are f that you are facing here. So it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, needs-based. Yeah. So we'll continue with that for the next years, hopefully, at least as long as I'm here. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for being here this morning. But I think as we can all clearly hear, the future might be full of challenges, but also great opportunities as well. And we look forward to, I think, also young South African designers, entrepreneurs, scientists, developers in helping us all come up with a solution to create a better world. Water has no substitute. Use it wisely. <laughs>